Hi, I'm so excited. We have a really, really fun tutorial today. I'm going to show you step by step how to make this gorgeous, whimsical jack-o'-lantern in the style of Cinderella's carriage. It's kind of like my signature jack-o'-lantern. I just absolutely adore it. I think it's so much fun. Um, just a little bit of a unique DIY for Halloween and it'd be great if you have kids. Very easy to do, but it just comes out looking so stunning and just really whimsical and fun for the holiday. So I'm gonna take you step by step, show you everything I did to create this beauty. Okay, so to start off here are all of the supplies. First, and of course, most importantly, we're gonna need a pumpkin. And I like to use this fake craft pumpkin. These are called Funkins. I got this at Joann's and it already came in this Cinderella-esque color. And it carves just like a real pumpkin, it's hollow inside. But obviously the nice thing is that it never goes bad. So you can keep it year after year for your future decorations. Um, or if you really want to, you could use a real pumpkin and just paint it this color. Then I also got some smaller pumpkins for the wheels on the carriage. So these little white pumpkins I think are perfect. You can get them at Trader Joe's for like 50 cents each. And they work really well. Or you could also get these small like pumpkin pie pumpkins and paint them white or silver, whatever color you want. Then for the decor on the actual pumpkin, we're going to have a, a door to the carriage. And this is actually a purse frame. I got this on Amazon, it came in a five pack. But when you open it up, like instead of making a coin purse out of it, you can open it all the way. And we're going to use that, like the door on the carriage. So you'll see how that works. And then we also have these to use as windows. And these are actually belt buckles or like scarf buckles, but I think that vertical line makes them look very window-esque and they're already kind of pre-decorated. These are from Joann's, I'll put the link. Then for other decor elements, we also have just a big pack of pearls and these little rhinestones. So those are gonna add some bling to our carriage. We also have this yellow sparkly tool, which you'll see how we're gonna use, and some silver wired ribbon. There's also some silver cord that we can use as a bridle because you're gonna need a toy horse. So this was my favorite brand of toy horse from when I was a kid. This is Briar brand, and I just think they're really realistic, beautiful horses. But really any white toy horse would work, um, but I'll put a link if I can find it to this exact one, or at least a similar one. And lastly, you're gonna need some hot glue, extra hot glue sticks. And I love to use these when I'm hot gluing. It's like a thimble for your finger that keeps you from burning yourself on the hot glue, so that's key. We also have some battery-operated twinkle lights that could go inside of the pumpkin. You could also use battery-operated candles, but I think the twinkle lights add a little bit of like a fairy tale element. And then lastly, I have this little kit of pumpkin carving tools that we're gonna use to actually get into our funkin, our toy pumpkin, our crafting pumpkin but you could also use this with a real pumpkin. And one last thing I want to mention is that Target is carrying this Cinderella pumpkin kit. So obviously that's an option. It comes with paint so you can paint the real pumpkin. And then these decorative elements sort of stick into the pumpkin and it's super cute as well. But I just wanted to show you this technique that I kind of came up with and love having as a piece of my decor every year. So I have all these supplies, but there's actually one more very important thing that I need, which is my husband. <laughs> He's going to be the muscles behind this operation and help us get carving into this pumpkin. So the first step is to figure out which side of your pumpkin you want to be the front. And I'm gonna decide where the door and windows are going. So I don't know if you can really see these pencil marks too well, but we decided where we wanted everything and traced with pencil onto the pumpkin. So now it's just gonna be a matter of carving out those pencil shapes and of course carving out the top so we can get inside. Then this is totally not necessary, but to decide where to cut around the top, we're gonna to use a bowl as a stencil. Bing. So it has a little hat. And... Oh my. Pick your tool. No, that's for scraping out seeds. I think this one. Hope there aren't any seeds in this. Woo! So as you can see, he did a beautiful job cutting out the top. Thank you, Oh, Thank you, but we need to erase Chris. some of that line. 
So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, but you can see this fake pumpkin is essentially made out of like sawdust. Yeah. But it's a little messy, but it's great because this will last us for years to come. And now we just have to cut out the front portions. Perfect job, babe, that's gorgeous. Wow, that looks really good. Now that I have my beautiful, perfectly carved pumpkin next to Nate, I'm going to go to the next step, which is to glue down these decorative elements on top of the holes that we carved. So I'll be using my little thimble to protect my, my finky and some hot glue, and we will just stick it on there. Okay, all the decorative elements are in place and you can tell it's starting to look a little bit more carriage-esque even though these are truly random items I picked up at the craft store. They just give it that metallic edge and then we're also gonna bling it out with some pearls and rhinestones. So to make this door more so match the windows, I'm gonna put a border of pearls all around it. So to glue these pearls on, I have these little tweezers that actually came with the rhinestones that I also have. Um, so I'll link that set below, but these tweezers are really helpful to kind of pick up the pearl bead. And you want to glue it so that the hole through the center of the bead is to the side so you don't see it. So with these, I can easily just place a dot of glue and glue them all around this opening here. One more thing I wanted to point out about this, since the surface of the pumpkin is obviously not flat and smooth, there's going to be gaps between everything you're gluing on. So you can see like that gap there between the purse front door clasp that I made. Uh, it's a pretty big gap, but as long as it's glued down well everywhere that it does touch the pumpkin, and of course you treat it gently over the years, it should hold up just fine. And the nice thing about bordering it with these pearls is that they're going to hide any of those gaps that you might have seen from another angle. Now we have all those elements in place. I'm just gonna kind of freestyle around the rest of the pumpkin with some more of these pearls and also these crystal rhinestones that I got. Well, this was a really cool little kit. It has different rhinestones in all sizes and the back's flat and the front is like a diamond. So you can set that and I just thought I would put some nice bling all around and I'm just gonna totally freestyle, randomly place these wherever the spirit moves me so that it looks extra shiny and festive. And I decided just to do rhinestones and I hope they're picking up decently on there. I did kind of just a random assortment of rhinestones, just enough to catch the light and give it that extra little je ne sais quoi, a little sparkle that you would expect of a princess. And I'm having way too much fun with this project. <laughs> okay. So next up, we're gonna make some curtains and I'm taking that yellow tool that I showed you, which is like this thin, sheer, shimmery yellow fabric and I folded it on itself several times and I actually literally stapled it shut um, because this isn't going to show, but it's gonna be the curtain that goes inside the windows into the carriage so that you can't see inside but you will get a hint of the twinkle lights coming through. So that is the curtain for the door, and I'm gonna make two smaller ones for the, for the side windows. So I'm seriously just folding this tool on itself, and you can see that's about the right width that it's going to cover that window nicely, and I think I can just cut this in two for both windows. So I'm just gonna staple my fabric. Obviously you could get a lot fancier with this step, but I say since it's not going to be visible, I don't want to waste a ton of effort on it. And then I'm going to cut this into two squares, so I have one for each window. And that is the easiest curtain ever. 
So now we're gonna glue our curtains into place on the inside of the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna put some hot glue along the top and the bottom of this curtain to see if that would be enough to kind of anchor it down in there. I'm not trying to get it like perfectly flush or anything. I just want it to sort of hold itself in place well enough. Sort of like how a real curtain would be fluttering in the breeze. I don't want this like glued down on every corner. I just want it enough to obscure the view of the lights and the fact that there's not an actual <laughs> Cinderella and Prince Charming in here. Although if you had little figurines, little toys, that would be so cute to add. Okay, all the curtains are in place and you can see it's pretty subtle. I don't want it to look closed off. Um, and once the light's in there, it'll really be nice. So I'm just gonna make one adjustment to this lid here. It comes with a black stem on the funkin, and I feel like that's slightly unfortunate because it's kind of dark. So I'm gonna use our like glittery silver ribbon to tie a bow on that. All right, time to put all the details together. So we have our pumpkin, which like I said before, I like to use this tray to hold the elements together since there are a few pieces. Next we're gonna add our beautiful white horse and I like that this one's kind of rearing up. And then I'm just taking this simple silver silky cord and using it to fashion almost like a bridle and reins for the horse because I didn't get one that came with that kind of extra accessories. <laughs> So if you want to find a toy horse that comes with a bridle and reins, you totally could. But I'm just tying this around his little nose and I'm just going to draw the reins up into the pumpkin since we don't have an actual driver for this wild red. And then of course we've got to put our twinkle lights in and this is really going to make it come to life. I'm so excited. One thing I would recommend would be using these twinkle lights that come with a remote control so that you can turn it on and off without reaching inside your pumpkin every time. These have a lot of different settings, so I'm just gonna put them on steady. And just put the whole thing in there. Oh, it already looks so good. And I'm going to go to town and put a bunch. And then last, but definitely not least, we need our pumpkin wheels. So to set those on the tray, I'm just going to use some like sticky tacky just to kind of help them not roll away since they are round like wheels and like pumpkins are. And just sticking a little bit of that sticky stuff to the bottom so I can prop it up where I want the wheel to go. Okay, all of the elements are in place. I feel... So happy with our whimsical little Cinderella jack-o'-lantern. I think it turned out so cute. And all of the little details really add to sort of that fairy tale feeling. And I would love to see your jack-o'-lanterns. They don't have to be princess ones. And I'll put my handle on the screen here so you can tag me and I wanna see your pumpkins. And I hope you enjoyed making this fun, playful Cinderella pumpkin. I hope you guys had as much fun with that as I did. I'm honestly just enamored with this jack-o'-lantern. I think it is so pretty, so fun and different for Halloween decor. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I would love it if you would hit subscribe, stick around, join our channel. It's one of the most fun, positive communities I've ever had the honor of being a part of. So I love all of you guys and I will say hi in the comments down below and I'll try to link everything we talked about and answer any questions you have and I will see you in my next video. Bye, happy Halloween.